Now, I ain't much of a singer, uh, but I can make a voice a little bit, right? Amen. And uh, unto and, and the Lord. Praise right? God. Serve the Lord. That's what we got to do. we got to serve Him with gladness. Mm -hmm. Boy, that makes a difference. When uh, you got joy in your soul. Oftentimes, I like to pray. I like to pray specific, uh, specific prayers. And a lot of times when I pray and I ask the Lord to give me peace in my heart, joy in my soul, and peace in my mind. And I found that in times of distress and grief, that when I pray that prayer, God does that. Because He is so faithful. He will give you peace in your heart. And He'll give you joy down in your soul and peace in your mind. Happiness relies on happenstance. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on around us. But joy and peace comes from Jesus Christ from above. Mm -hmm. And He gives us that down in our heart. Praise God. And I'm glad today that we serve a God like that. Amen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That loves us. Uh, Jesus loves me. This I know. But what a great thing to know this morning. That Jesus. Loves me. That person, Jesus loves me. Yes, I know. Mm -hmm. For the Bible says so. Praise mm -hmm. God. Well, I'm glad for that today. Amen. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. I'm so happy to be here this morning in the house of the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, I love this place more and more the more I come here. And I uh, love you people more and more as I come by here. I just appreciate the opportunity that the Lord has given us. And it's something certainly that uh, I don't take lightly. That for the church doors to be open. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Whosoever will, Jesus said, they can come. They can come this morning. And uh, what a great privilege that it is that we have in the Lord. And I appreciate that this morning. So much thankful for each and every one that's here today and uh, for what the Lord's done for us this week. We've got much to pray about. Got lots of sick folks. Good to see those who have been out back today that's been sick. And uh, we just want to remember each one and every one in this place. Well, I've been much in prayer for the service this morning, and I believe that I have a word from the Lord. For us today, out of Genesis chapter number 22. Well, I'm back over to Genesis chapter number 22. If I had a title for this message today, I would title it when I lay my eyes down. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of things we'll discover in this passage of Scripture in our lives that we carry around. There's a lot of I found in my life uh, some Isaacs that I've had to lay down just as Abraham did. Genesis chapter number 22, verse number 1, we'll read 14 verses. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. Now here's God, he's testing Abraham. He's going to test Abraham, and I know this that. In reading from chapter 12, I probably over through chapter number 22 this week, that Abraham had an ear uh, to hear what the Lord had to say unto him. Uh, when, when God spoke to Abraham, Abraham, like Samuel, would say, Behold, here am I. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. And offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, sat with his ass, and took Isaac his son, and glazed the wood for the burnt offering, rose up, and went into the place of which God had called him. And on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And uh, Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here, and with the ass, and I, the lamb, will go yonder and worship, and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, and laid upon Isaac his son. He took the fire in his hand, and a knife, and 
went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, Father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, there is a far of the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Oh, I love verse number 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And so they went, both of them together, and they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him upon the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand uh, upon the lad, neither do anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy, thy son, thine only son from me. And Abraham reached up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horn. And Abraham went and took the ram, offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place to hold the as it is said unto this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you for the day. Thank you for the blessings of life. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for the reading of your word today, God. Lord, I pray for your Holy Spirit today. God, as we break the bread of life onto the table of those thy people's hearts, God, back up the opposing powers of hell today. And count angels around this church. Help us today, God. Lord, give us unction. And what you do for us, we'll thank you and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. First Peter, Second Peter, chapter number 1, verse number 22. It says, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God, saved as it were, they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Spirit of God, moved on the man Moses. Uh, Moses on his way uh, from Egypt to Canaan land to pin down this wonderful book of Genesis for us. As a matter of fact, Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible, uh, the Pentateuch, uh, uh, there on his way. And he done that. You say, how did Moses do that when he is leading probably in excess of two million people out of captive. What what a great uh, task that he had, uh, uh, but he done that through the Holy Spirit. Holy men of God, as they were led by the Holy Spirit. And praise God today for the Holy Spirit of God uh, that helped Moses to do that. And here we have the story of Father Abraham. That great patriarch. Praise God. Boy, I love reading about Father Abraham. He's the father of the nations. Uh, now, we are the church of the living God. Uh, we're, we're not spiritual Israel. We're the bride of Christ. We're the church of the living God uh, today. But Abraham, the great patriarch. Did you realize that Abraham was the first Hebrew? And Isaac was the first Jew? And uh, Jacob was the first Israelite. There's a lot of firsts that come uh, through this. But this was ordained of God. And here we have Father Abraham, that great man of God, Lord Abraham. What can we say about Abraham? He was a great man. You go over to Hebrews chapter number 11, the uh, direct faith chapter, and uh, there's multiple verses about Abraham and the faith that he had in God. Matter of fact, praise God. He looked for the city whose builder and maker was God. Praise God today. The same city, hallelujah, that we're looking for today, that has foundations whose builder and maker is God. Where our loved ones have gone when they left this world. One day, that's where we're going, praise God. Through the eye of faith, we'll see that city one day. One day, praise God, just as Abraham said, End it inside our faith. We'll end it inside. But I want to say something this morning. Abraham was a human being. Just as I and you and I are human beings today. Abraham was a human being. 
praise God today. And uh, we know that he was just a man. He was just a human, just as we are human. Now, there were some things God wanted from Abraham. That's the gist of the message today. That's what I want us to get. I, I, I was several weeks back, I woke up with this thought on my heart. And uh, I pulled up a, a song. A song is called When I Lay My Eyes Down. I couldn't get that song off my heart. And all my life, I want to say something today. I've read this passage of the scripture. And I've heard that, that song sung. But it dawned on me for the first time. Uh, that song said, When I Lay My Eyes Down. Yeah. Uh, uh, Abraham. Oh, uh, that was the very thing that he loved. He loved Isaac. Uh, but listen, God told him to take Isaac up there and lay him down on that altar. But I want to say something. It wasn't Isaac that God wanted. It was Abraham. Right. He wanted his obedience. He wanted his trust and his loyalty. And listen, church, uh, he wanted to take Abraham to a different level in his spiritual life word that he was living. As great a man as Abraham was, God never stopped caring for him and wanting him to go to another level in his spiritual life. Amen? Mm -hmm. And I think about it like this in my mind. And I've thought about this down through the years. Spiritually speaking, it's like being in school and uh, passing from one grade to the next. Getting promoted. Amen. I, I laid in the bed the other night and I thought, Lord, spiritually, what grade am I in? I don't know. Maybe I'm in middle school. Uh, I hope I'm out, out of the uh, elementary stages of mm -hmm. the spiritual life. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I don't have a whole lot of... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question for us to ask ourselves today. Uh, where are we at with the Lord? Spiritually speaking, I want to say something. Um, God will let us move up. We can get closer to God in the day of our place where we live. Yeah. Now, uh, we'll, we'll learn some stuff on over through here, but God, oh, Abraham, uh, listen, uh, there were some things God wanted from Abraham. There were trials, there were tribulations and tests to challenge Abraham. Now those we'll have to admit come along in our lives. Uh, the trials and the tribulations and the tests uh, that we have to walk through in our lives. And some of those, uh, they are not they are not pleasant. Uh, but to challenge Abraham to grow and to mature his faith in God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 through 3. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I want to say this about this morning about faith. Uh, there in Hebrews uh, 11, 1. Faith is, now faith is the substance. Uh, that is the foundation of things hoped for, praise God. That our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and in the risen Savior is the foundation in which we stand on. Praise God today. It's the substance. That's the foundation of things. Hope for. What are we hoping for today? What was Abraham hoping for? God told him to step out. He went looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. He stepped out on faith. And he was hoping that one day he was going to see that city that God had told him of. Right. And can I tell you that one day he did see that city, praise God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, just as Abraham uh, was a pilgrim and a stranger passing through this land, uh, uh, dwelling in tents uh, uh, with his children and his inheritance, uh, I believe God should have spoke to him and said, Abraham, uh, don't drive the tent stakes down too far uh, because we're going to be moving on. We're moving on toward that city. 
Praise God, they have the foundation. Mm -hmm. Whose builder and maker is God. Hallelujah. And I would encourage you today, church, uh, let's don't drive the kids' stakes down too deep. Praise yeah. God. Because one of these days, hallelujah, we're going home, glory to God. We're going to see Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's the hope that we have today. That one day, hallelujah, them graves are going to pop mm -hmm. open and Jesus is going to say, yeah. come up here, brother. Right? Hammer 
and sparks flew there from him, praise God, and he bedecked the stars with sky. The sky with stars. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, that's what he done. He done that. And by faith, we believe that today. We believe that. I believe that. I believe God done that. Amen. Now, so things which are seen, we're not made of things which do appear. Now, that's very simple to me. Uh, things which are seen are not made of things which do appear. Uh, that's, that's why he can't be evolution. Because if it was, things would still be evolutionary. Uh, evolved. Amen? Uh, but right here, it's one. Things which are seen are not made of things which do with people. Glory to God. Hallelujah <laughs> for that sake. Also in Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 6, I want to say this. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible. That's one of my go-to verses, James. He's the rewarder of them. Praise God that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. In the midnight hour. Praise God when you feel like you're by yourself, when you are by yourself. When, when maybe your family can't be with you to come. When your pastor can't be with you to come. Uh, praise God. Uh, he's a rewarder of them. If you diligently seek him, praise God. Hallelujah. Can I say by faith we believe that? Yes. I sure do. Uh, because he proved that to me in my life. Amen. Uh, down through the years. Down through the life. Praise God. Boy, I'm glad for that. That makes me happy. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now I want to say this. Number one. God and Abraham had a personal relationship James 2, 23 says, and the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called, listen to this, the friend of God. Wow, what a title. What a title to be called the friend of God. In your Bible, in your King James Bible, that word friend is a capital letter. He was a friend of God. My soul. What a testimony that man had. Well, I'm like when this thing's over, uh, that I could be called a friend of God. What you, mm-hmm. a friend of God. And listen, it almost say this, and hey, it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Now, today, in the great age dispensation that we live in, Christ is, his righteousness is imputed unto us when we become born again Christians. Uh, that's how we get through in the day and hour in which we live in. But in Abraham's time, uh, what he believed was imputed unto him for righteousness. That's how God had it set up back then. He was called a friend of God. Now, in verse number one, I want you to notice this. This little phrase. And after these things, and after, uh, and it came to pass, I after these things. What thing? The spiritual experience of Abraham. I like this. This was marked in my Scoville study Bible. The spiritual experience of Abraham was marked by four great crises, each of which involved a surrender of something naturally most dear to Abraham. I thought that was interesting. I want to read that again. The spiritual experience of Abraham was marked by four great crises, each of which involved a surrender of something most dear to him. As I studied this this week, I look back over my life, and I could see times in my life when I had to surrender something that I thought was so dear unto me. And there were times, Brother Lonnie, that I didn't understand completely why this situation is going on. What is going on? Why? Uh, but uh, it's God. I want you to 
gives us this thing in your eyes that maybe it's ungodly, maybe it's not. To get to a higher spiritual plane in your eyes. Each involves the surrender of something naturally most here. Number one, that's what's the highest. Remember in chapter number 12, he told Abraham to lead your country and your kindred. Here's Abraham's very first time. I want you to leave country and kindred. I want you to leave them behind. Now, I want to say something. Uh, that's a hard thing to do. I thought a lot about the missionaries that go off on the foreign field. Uh, they have to uh, leave this great country behind. Uh, I was listening to one old preacher. He was uh, he was a pastor, uh, but he was uh, at a missions conference. And uh, uh, the, the, the pastor of the church called him to come up and address the missionaries that were there. And he said, thank God for you missionaries. Thank God that you are willing to go to the foreign country to do what you do. He said, because I don't want to do it. He said, I'm going to be honest with you. I like prior and ice cream and cheeseburgers, and I don't want to go nowhere with that country with that ain't fun. And he said, so I'm going to support you, and I'm going to give you all the money I can so God will keep you going so I can stay over here. And he said that in a joking manner, but uh, in a way of speaking, uh, you know, he was being honest. But listen, to give up, that's the whole country and kindred. That's what Abraham had to do first. Secondly, uh, not only the parents, but the people. Remember his nephew off. Abraham had to <coughs> completely separate himself from the law. Now, the Bible makes it clear, although the law, we don't agree with what he did. He pitched his tent toward Sodom. His, the Bible says that his righteous soul was vexed with the filthy deeds of their conversation from day to day. Now, what that tells me is that law, he was a righteous man. Yes, so he was vexed by the filthy deeds of their conversation. And can I say something today in our lives? And I found out that some folks I have to distance myself from. Mm-hmm. Amen. Uh, hey, we don't preach separation enough in our Baptist churches nowadays. The Bible says to come out from among them and be ye a separate people, thus saith the Lord. Yeah. We're Bible of Christ, and that's the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And we are ambassadors. Just as you and I uh, was in the military, we were ambassadors for the United States of America. And uh, I know they taught you the same thing they taught me. When you go out in the club, if you've got that uniform on, uh, you better look good uh, because you are representing your country. And what people in another country see and what they associate with the United States, they associate with you and how you act. That's what they call us. And I believe the same concept can be with a Christian. And with a child of God. Amen. Now, Abraham, uh, the people, he had to separate himself from law. And I understand there were extenuating circumstances regarding the herdsmen and them fighting amongst one another. And so Abraham and Paul, they, they had great substance so that the flames couldn't hold them, so they separated. And uh, law, that flame of man. He looked out. He said, that's well watered. I'm going over there, Uncle Abraham. So he separated himself, and he went that way. But I'm going to say something about Abraham. He never quit loving Lot. He went and rescued him. If you read the chapters before, uh, when uh, Lot was taken prison, uh, Abraham went and uh, he rescued him. Uh, but uh, he uh, had to separate himself, the people that he had to separate from. Uh, not only the past and the people, uh, but the plan of his own concerning Ishmael. This is one of the crises of Abraham's life. God told him he was going to be the father, uh, and how, uh, that his, they would be as the same as the sea and the stars of the sky. But yet, somehow or another, 
Abraham had a little crisis, and he decided that, uh, and his wife said, take Hagar to be your wife, my handmaid. <laughs> Since I can't have a child, you can have a child with her. So Abraham marked, and then he did that thing. So Abraham had a blame, and here comes along Ishmael. Uh, but that caused a lot of problems. That caused a lot of problems. And I say something, that still causes a lot of problems today. Uh, the seed of Ishmael, because God said his hand will be against every man, and every man's hand will be against him. Nobody can't get along with him. And uh, that's the bus we're fighting in the Middle East today uh, that hates everybody. Amen? But uh, uh, God, listen, uh, was teaching Abraham. Abraham stepped out on his own. He had a plan. And God said, no, that ain't going to work. But then finally, the person. Oh, this is one of the things, listen, that he's going to have to deal with. This friend of God. This spiritual experience of Abraham. This whole great crisis. It's got to be the surrender of something most dear unto him. And that's the person. That's the one he loved the most. And that was Isaac. He loved Isaac the most. His only son. The Bible calls him. That was his son by Sarah. And God tested Abraham. God did tempt him. That word tempt, it means to test. Hebrews 11, 7. Let me read this. I've got it marked in my notes. notes. Hebrews 11, 17 and 18. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it is said that this, uh, that in Isaac shall all thy seed be called. Accounting to God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received in a figure. That's the faith that Abraham had, that God would raise Isaac up. God tested him. And uh, there, in verse number one, we also notice Abraham's immediate answer, Behold, here I am. Abraham was always in tune with God, listening for God's voice. But in verse number two, we see a personal request. God is specific in his request. He said, Abraham, uh, take now thy son, thine only son. Oh, God is specific in God. It's personal. Whom thou lovest. God is pointed and purposeful and plain in instruction. And he instructs Abraham, get thee to the right, to the place that I will show thee. Praise God. God's going to always say, listen, to a place. He's always going to show us that place. That word Moriah in your Bible is a mount on the eastern edge of Jerusalem where Solomon built the temple. I thought that was interesting. And the name Moriah simply means chosen by God. God had a chosen way for, for Abraham to lay Isaac down. The first one was all of Abraham, the verse number three. I also involved his immediate response. He rose up early. Oh, he was constant. Uh, he prepared. He got the stuff ready. Let's look at verse number three. Abraham rose up early in the morning, and he saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son. Now notice this word. He laid the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up early, and went into the place in which God had told him. Now that word blade in your Bible means a brokenness. It means uh, uh, to claim means to break apart, to rip open or to break in pieces. And can I tell you uh, that I believe old Abraham, when he was getting ready, Daddy, I believe his heart was broke. He knows what God had told him to do. I don't believe Abraham told anybody else what God had told him to do. I don't believe he went and told Sarah. God told me to take Isaac down yonder on the mountain and put him up for all of them. 
his heart was broke. That word slave means brokenness. To splinter, to break into pieces. And I believe old Abraham, as he got out there and broke that wood, I believe his heart was broken. And he got ready to, to do the task that God told him to do. And sometimes, I'm going to tell you the things that God tells us to do. Uh, sometimes we have a broken heart about it. And that verse of place, the place Abraham would believe in verse number four. Oh, I believe it was counted unto him that he believed that there would be a resurrection. Then on the third day, Abraham reached up and died, and he saw the place of sorrow. Praise God, Abraham, I believe that he believed that God was going to raise Isaac up at that time. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass. And I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and we'll come again unto you. That's, that's a picture of resurrection right there, praise God, on that third day. And then the personal sacrifice of Isaac. Uh, in verse number 6, Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. Oh, I thought about this this morning as I looked over this. I thought about the Jewish people for 1,493 years carried the burden of trying to live under the law. But praise God when Jesus walked up Calvary's mountain. Amen. And that third glorious day, praise God. Boy, Jesus took our burden of sin upon himself. He, it was those sins back in the Jewish economy they, they offered a sacrifice and it rolled their sins back for a year. And it rolled their sins back for another year. And another year. And another year. For all those years. For all those 1,500 years. Can you imagine the burden of sin? Jesus not only took the past, uh, the present, and uh, the future sins, he also took those past sins. It was all rolled upon him. And I thought about old Abraham. They up there to the bottom of that mountain. After three days, he seen that mountain. And he went over there to that little donkey. And he unloaded that burden off of it. That burden of wood. And he laid it upon his son. Well, I thought about what Jesus does to you and I. Right. When that burden of sin was laid upon him. Mm -hmm. When he went up to his heel. That's what he did, praise God, to you and I. Hallelujah. This morning. Oh, Lord, it's all. Here he is. Taking that burden. Carry that burden of sin. Not only for the Jew, for all mankind. Oh, the son asked the father in verse number seven the question, where is the lamb? Where is the lamb? Verse number eight. The faith of Abraham, God will provide himself a lamb. I thought about the lamb of God, and I thought about the Father. God the Father, God the Son. In verse number 6 and verse number 7, it says, So they went both of them together. The Father and the Son, Abraham and Isaac, were never apart during this time period. And I thought about Jesus when he walked this earth, praise God. Give me God, the Father. <laughs> Uh, they were always together. They were always one. So they went both of them together. And verse number nine, here's the message for today. Isaac, oh, that type of Christ. And uh, he went to the place Abraham did where God told him of. There's that place for each and every one of us. And when we get there, we will know it. Isaac, of course, the type of Christ. He's obedient unto death. Philippians 2, 5 through 8 says, uh, 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 let, us, uh, let this mind be in you, which was also Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it no robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, but took unto him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion of a man, listen, humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And that's exactly what Isaac did. Right. I believe Isaac uh, was probably a pretty good strapping young man. 
maybe uh, uh, probably a pretty good strapping young boy, young man. He could have probably overpowered uh, Abraham. I don't know exactly how old Isaac was. I know in the beginning of chapter number 23, when Sarah died, Isaac was 37 years old. If you study the math by looking at the Bible. So how old he was here, I don't know. But uh, I believe he became humble in obedience unto Father Abraham. He tied him up. He bound him. And he laid him up on that altar. He might have crawled up on that altar and laid him tied up there. Abraham, he laid the wood in order. God, the God of order, bound Isaac and laid him upon the altar. The one Isaac loved more than anything. But God didn't want Isaac. God didn't want Abraham to kill Isaac. You look at it. God wanted Abraham. He wanted him to move closer. That's my desire for this church today. That's my desire for my today. That's the mess. When I lay my eyes at stand. As we stand this morning. Can I ask you to examine yourself? Could you come back to the piano, please? Point number 142, if you don't mind. As we examine ourselves this morning. I would ask you to examine your heart this morning. If every head's bowed and every eye is closed. What is it in your life? Maybe you have an eye that you need to lay down. Maybe you need to come forward this morning. The, the altar is open today for any and all today. If you have a need in your life, certainly I will pray with you. As we examine ourselves in just a moment, I've examined myself this week. Lord, what is it? And I've looked back over the life. Some of the things. Some of the items that I've laid down in my life. And I thank God for taking me to those places. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the liberty that we've given us to preach this morning. God, I pray that your word today would go out in power, go out in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. God, help us this week to examine our lives. God, if there's anything in our lives today, God, that's just pleasing unto me, I pray that you help us to lay it down. God, you're a God of order. God, you'll show us that place. God, that all. There's some answers, Lord, that we have to put for with Abraham building all of us. He laid that thing on him, God, and he left the Lord. God, you bless him for it. God, I know you'll bless us today. We thank you for the time together. I thank you for each heart, each soul that's here today, God. God, I pray for those that may be listening by means of uh, the radio uh, broadcast that we have here. God, I pray that you help them today, God. Uh, God, speak to those hearts today. And God, I pray, Lord, that your house will be full of the folks who come in. Father, I pray that you dismiss us now in your power and in your fear. God, in what you do for us, we'll thank you and we'll praise you. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much for being here today. It's been so wonderful to be in the house of God. Remember the service tonight? We'll have service tonight. I'll be back here preaching again, Lord willing. And uh, so if you can, come on back and invite somebody to come. And we love each and every one of you. Uh, so thankful to have you today. If all hearts and minds are clear, remember the business meeting. And uh, if all hearts and minds are clear, you're ready to go.